So uh, hi, everyone. I'm Xiaoming Zhang, and I'm a senior data scientist at Lobdo Digital. Uh, I joined Lobdo Digital from uh, uh, May 2019, and it's been over a year. So at Lobdo Digital, basically, I work on the uh, recommendation, the presentation project, as well as the machine learning deployment infrastructure. In today's talk, I'm going to share our story uh, about how we productionize our machine learning models as uh, managed macro services. So in this talk, I'll cover uh, the following outlines. First, I'll start with our e-commerce use case at Loblaw Digital and uh, how we ship our machine learning uh, models, the tech stack we choose, and the workflow we follow. And also, I will talk about once we deployment, deploy multiple models, how we can uh, do online testing to continuously monitor the model performance and uh, to improve our models through, for example, A-B testing or multi many testing. And I will also uh, talk about some considerations in one of our case studies, how we build these recommendation services, like what is our design choices and uh, what is the reasoning behind the, our choices. A few other considerations, uh, including the fault tolerance, resilience, and security, and how we are trying to adopt the best practice, practices from, from software engineering. So I will first uh, talk a little bit about um, the background story of Loblaw Digital. So at Loblaw Digital, we focus on the e-commerce business of our company. That includes the PC Express for grocery pickup and delivery, from different banners and beauty boutique, PC Optimum and Joe Fresh. So a little history about us. We started as a with a monolithic e-commerce platform about like seven years ago. But our, as our business grows, this monolithic platform could no longer meet our requirements. So we are trying to pull out the core capacities for the e-commerce, including the products, uh, cars or search. Uh, use uh, customer identity access management as a standalone stand services. And we're running them as the microservices in modern tenancy Kubernetes cluster. So this is the background. And for our data science team, uh, this microservice uh, architecture allows us to manage our services individually within our team. And we are able to write in different languages and decouple the versions and release different components at different times and scale co the components independent, independently and uh, all, as well as uh, like maintain the security boundaries between different services. So we support, support our, our data science team, support our business in a variety of ways. In, from, for the online shopping website, we provide operational related services, including the, for example, assortment, inventory availability and forecasting service. We also provide personalization and recommendation services in the omni channels, such as on the website, as well, as well as the personalized email offers. So in today's talk, I will use a recommendation service as a case study to demonstrate how we ship our machine learning models as macro, as a management, microservices. So like, how do we do that? First, we have the requirements as the as web services in our e-commerce website. Uh, it has to be performant. performant. And uh, we have the service level objective in terms of the latency and availability. And we also want our service you know, want to be able to deploy new models in the future. And also, to, to do online testing, A-B testing, or multi many testing for different models. And we should able to uh, integrate our model deployment with our CI-CD pipeline using GitLab. So our solution is to adopt a model deployment framework built on Kubernetes. And we could implement multi many tests to test uh, multiple models on production traffic. And by Lending the Kubernetes default uh, functionality, it supports the rolling update, canary deployment, and some naive A-B testing as well. So I'll jump straight to our tech stacks. So we are using some uh, open source tools to help serve 
machine learning models on Kubernetes clusters. We, we use a uh, Southern core to, to wrap all the models, deploy them on the Kubernetes cluster and uh, uh, expose it as a service endpoint and could be consumable by other web services. And we also leverage Istio for traffic management as well. So to understand how we adopt a Southern core in our Kubernetes cluster, we could logically split this uh, infrastructure into a data plan and a control plan and a data plan. In the control plan, we extend the uh, Kubernetes by adding the op operator and register the customer resource definition. So the operator, it is uh, to tell the Kube API server how make the reality match the configured resources. And it is running the cluster as a deployment. And the uh, CRD, that is customer resource definition, it is a controller object, which is a collection, uh, describes a collection of Kubernetes res uh, native resources, including, for example, the pods, containers, or services, and config map secrets and stuff like that. And in the data plan, we added a component called the uh, uh, service orchestrator to our inference graph. So this service orchestrator is basically a a uh, web server implemented in Java, uh, Java Spring Boot. So it uh, forwards the traffic from the Istio proxy sidecar to all our microservice component. It calls this microservice components asynchronously and uh, to get the inference and uh, send, back, send back in the response. So, and this service orchestrator, it also handles things like the payload logging, tracing and metrics, and it exposes a metric endpoint for the Prometheus to script the metrics. So now for the workflow, so how do we, how do we uh, deploy machine learning models using the, our previous tech stacks? So the first step will be the wrap, uh, wrap the model and uh, to create a Docker image. So basically what we need to, to be included is in the, in the model image is the model class. That's where we embed our business logic. So we could do either online inference or offline inference. inference. For example, for the online inference, we basically we load, the, load the model binaries. And for the offline inference, we pre-calculate the model inference result and write them into database. And in our model class, what we did is a database query. So we could have different options for the database as well. Like the, uh, we, we use the uh, Google, Google Cloud Platform. So we leverage the uh, Bigtable or Data Store or Cloud SQL instances. We could also wrap the uh, filter rules. That is, uh, we could do a very simple base, rule-based recommendations as well. And in the model, we also include the middleware code that is provided by the Seldon's language wrapper as a base image. It is basically the part of the, of the web server. So the next step will be describe the model, describe the deployment as a Kubernetes manifest file. So in this Kubernetes manifest file, we include things like the inference graph that is describing the logics between different microservice components. And it also includes the Kubernetes pod template spec, spec that where we uh, fill in what kind of which image we're gonna pull and the relevant policies such as timeout, the retries, and also we define the environmental variables. We also spe specify a horizontal pod auto scaling spec and also attach different position volumes like um, for for example, the secret, secret volumes. And the next two steps will be deploy and monitoring. So we deploy this, uh, we apply this Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes manifest files using standardized tools, including the group CTL and Helm. And we embed this part in our GitLab CI pipeline configurations. After we deploy the model, we definitely want to know how the service performs, how how the service status, for example, the, the request the rate, latency percentiles, and like the error risk, um, the client side error or server side errors. And we also want to monitor in real time how the model performs. 
For example, in our later um, multi arm bandit test experiment, we will monitor how the reward to different models. And we can also define custom metrics that we could monitor in real time. And this whole workflow, we could, uh, we could, we could continue to develop new models and continue de deployment, deploy the models in our Kubernetes clusters. So now let's move to the model testing part. Uh, we can, in our current uh, infrastructure, we can do some uh, naive A-B testing by leveraging the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes and Istio's traffic management capacities. So in the A-B testing, we could uh, uh, randomly, randomly route a, person, a percentage of traffic to one model and the rest of the traffic to another model. But we can do, actually do better than this. We could uh, do a more sophisticated, sophisticated multi-arm bandit testing. So in this multi-arm bandit testing, compared to the naive AP testing, what we have is uh, we, when we do not know which model is the best performing one, and we want to explore the models, that is the exploration region. And we want to make sure the our services is uh, having the best possible outcome, that is, that is, we dynamically allocate the traffic to the best performing model branch. That is the exploitation stage. So the multi -arm bandit, in the multi-arm bandit testing scenario, we have the router component and we have the model component. So in the router component, we will, route, we will do two things. Once we decide which model to route to and which, which uh, what kind of reward we are going to assign to different models. So I'll jump into more details here. So in a typical multi-arm bandit testing scenario, so we will start with a set of possible actions. That is, uh, in our case, that is the different types of models. And uh, when, we, when we take the action, choosing one of the models, it will generate an outcome. And for this outcome, it will lead to a reward, depending on our uh, specific reward logic. So the whole idea of this multi-arm bandit experiment strategy is, is to find the action item, to find the action that maximizes the expect, expectation of this, uh, to maximize the expectation of the total reward. So typically, we could uh, do two types of strategies. One is the epsilon gradient strategy. It is more easier to implement. So we have a, a small, um, small possible number epsilon, which is uh, much smaller than one. So we randomly choose one of the model branch from these actions. And for each trial, we estimate the payout rate, that is the expected reward for, the, for each of the action. And after these uh, trials, we select the, the case action with the highest payout with the probability one minus epsilon that is a larger probability and ex we, meanwhile it ex explore other actions randomly with a smaller pro probability epsilon so that's why how we that's how we balance the exploration at, and the exploitation stage and for we we could also implement a, a more final uh, stretch called the uh, template sampling so in this case, we do not know how the model performs. So we first estimate from a, estimate this uncertainty use a distribution of Px. So we sample a model parameter theta from this distribution and select its action that is associated with the highest model parameter theta. And after we apply this distribution, after we apply this action, we could observe the outcome and calculate the reward. Reward. Then we update the the distribution by conditioning of the of the observation. So, to implement this multi-arm bandit experiment, we have several things to consider about. One thing is to choose the routing algorithm. Basically, it's a mapping between branch values and the routing state. And we could choose either the epsilon greedy Thomas sampling, or we could impl implement any kind of customer routing logic in it. 
So we could apply some rule-based model assignment. And for the reward function, we could uh, start with, that is the action X yields to an outcome. So this reward is generated by this outcome. We could start with some Bernoulli type of reward. So for example, if we have some recommendation services on the website and we recommend some rec product to the user, we could assign the reward based on if the user accepts, clicks through the product or added it to cart. And uh, in, in the detailed implementations, we actually face more realistic problems. So as we are deploying our services on Kubernetes, so the best scenario we can have is a stateless service so that get the data from the environment or other stateful services. And the stateless services are easy to scale to an administrator and to migrate to new versions because they their lack of state. But the reality is, it is generally not pos possible for us to avoid using state, uh, using stateless services at, the, at, this, at the, this time point. Why? Because we need to persist the routing state. That means if we spin up a new replica, we do not want to have it with a code start. We wanted to get the routing state from, from a persistent storage or database. And another thing we could we need to consider about is whether we whether or not we need the session affinity. That is, in we do not when the user try to browse uh, try to re refresh their their browser, like after five seconds, if the search result or the recommendation result is totally different, it will lead to a it will lead to a bad user experience. So we need to implement the session affinity to some to certain circumstances. And another practical consideration is the how we can construct the feedback loop. Because in the feedback loop, we need to calculate the reward based on the outcome. And we need to use this reward to update the branch values. And we, used, we need to use these branch values to update our routing state. So how can we do that? We could either, ideally, we want to do that in real time. For example, in our uh, website front end, when the user adds this item to cart or clicks through some items, it will, the front end will send out some asynchronous message to our feedback endpoint, and then we could calculate the reward and update, you then send the reward to our persistent storage. And for now, what we are implementing is actually an offline reward calculation because we, we still need the, the capacity from the front end. So in this diagram, we can see that we, we do not have a real-time feedback loop. So we use a scheduled job to collect the uh, web analytics data and calculate the, uh, the reward and the routing state and save it to a database. And our router will pull the uh, our our router will pull this uh, branch state and the, or the routing object from our database. This is one of our, our current implementation. It is not ideal, but it works. So now I will come to our case study: how we build the recommendation services on our e-commerce website. So the design part, we can, so in our design, we try to decouple the model training and the serving pipeline. The reason we are doing this is that we could manage them orthogonally. So we can make changes to our services without breaking the entire things. So in the training pipeline, we can see that we digest the data from various sources, for example, we could digest the uh, transaction logs, like the sale receipts, product and metadata from our analytical data warehouse. We could uh, ingest our data assets, for example, the, the product images from our cloud, from the cloud storage. And we could also, sometimes we will need to connect to our on-prem database as well. So uh, after the data ingest step, we, we will do the training inference and post-processing jobs. Basically on a data proc cluster, it is the managed Hadoop cluster service. 
But so it is not necessarily that we run all of our train jobs on the Hadoop cluster. For some of our, our recommendation services, we are also able to run, use the uh, Kubernetes GPU node pools and run distributed training jobs on that as well. So after this training inference and post-processing step, we, um, we use the, uh, the data proc HDFS connector to write the this part of data into a GCS bucket. And we run a um, data pipeline job using a data flow that is a managed Apache Beam service to write this part of data to our, uh, to our database. That is, we use a cloud big table that which is a managed NoSQL no wide column database. So for different type of models, we could save to different uh, tables. For example, here in this uh, diagram, we have three different models. So for the serving pipeline, as, we, as I showed before, so we will deploy this, uh, deploy this um, uh, machine learning model as a, here at the REST API endpoint under our application namespace. And this service could be consumed by other web services, which could be deployed under another namespace in our Kubernetes cluster. And in our uh, REST API, service we actually we run the queries we run the queries to different models according to the multi embedded test we wrote we might choose to different uh, different models according to their performance so there are several considerations on this uh, uh, recommendation service so we first is the uh, for tolerance and resilience because we are building a web service we, are, we actually want to make sure this service could, could withstand abuse of a typical e-commerce website. So we need it to meet our requirements in terms of availability, scalability, and durability. In terms of the availability, it means that we need to implement the health check. We need to know that uh, we need to spot uh, whether the service is up or not to spot the problem as early as possible. And we also need to implement, implement uh, all, uh, functions to, to prevent this overload failure. This is also a joint effort between our API consumer and our, and our side. So for the, for the client side, they typically could implement things like the circuit break, breaker pattern or explain, exponential backups. And in our side, we could leverage our, the Istio's traffic management feature to apply rate limiting or time out, time out policies. And in terms of scalability, we are leveraging the Kubernetes horizontal pod auto scaling to spin uh, more or less replicas to handle different uh, web traffic volumes. And in terms of durability, we currently we leverage the uh, Google Cloud Platform's management services to their default data replication. For example, when we are using cloud uh, big table as our database server, as our database choice, it stores data in the file in the Google file system, it and provides better durability than the than the default three replicas provided by the HDFS. Another thing is after we deploy the, the uh, machine learning model as a service, we need to monitor the service state and the model performance. So this is how we pull out all this, uh, uh, our monitoring, logging and learning pipeline. So here we leverage the uh, GCP's default stack driver to monitor the custom metrics and also the container logs from, uh, from our model deployment. And we also use a Grafana and a Prometheus to monitor the performance and the customer metrics for our deployment as well. And also, we could uh, integrate the pager duty to our as a notification channel of our Grafana dashboard. So when we allow, when we monitor the the service metrics, and so we could set up a alerting alerting rules based on our service level objective. So for example, if the latency is above our, the threshold, or the error rate is above the threshold, we will 
this will trigger alert and uh, we could set up the on-call schedule to maintain our service. And we are also trying to adopt some best practices from software development. In our case, we're trying to um, commit a better testing framework. So basically we, can, we have this unit test, integration test and performance test. This is done either internally or as a cross team effort. For example, in our unit test, we definitely want to test the model class methods like the prediction methods or run the route methods. And we use the frameworks such as the unit test or PyTest for Python language. And for the integration test, it is uh, done by both our side and from our API consumer. So in from our side, we test the multi, multiple microservice components and, our, and also our, uh, the e-commerce website backend service team, they will do the integration test from their side as well. And for, for the performance test from our side, we typically use the low cost distributed load testing. So basically we spin up a low cost workers and uh, send out to the loop. So we, we could spawn uh, a certain number of concurrent users to, and send requests to our service as much as possible. So during this uh, test, we, we will try to make sure we have a realistic concurrent traffic volume and concurrent users, and also a realistic cache hit and miss rate. So we could test the latency and the throughput of our service. And from our service cons API consumer side, they will conduct the independent performance test from their side as well. Another consideration is our is the security part. So it has uh, three aspects we need to consider. One is the credentials, for example, that is the service account JSON case or the access tokens. For the for these credentials, we we will save them in what service, and uh, that is running on our Kubernetes cluster as well. So during our container run um, build time or runtime, we could uh, pull the pull these uh, uh, credentials from the what and uh, create a Kubernetes secret mountain as a secret volume to our deployment pod. In terms of the network, we deploy our service in a private Kubernetes cluster under a shared VPC network. We are not exposing to public internet, uh, internet traffic. We only enable the internal DNS record and uh, uh, we, we also configure our gateway to accept the traffic on um, port 403 only, so it only terminates HTTPS traffic requests. And uh, we also leverage the ECU's security measures, security by default. So we don't need to make changes on the application code or our in infrastructure. So current the security measures, including like the mutual TLS between the two for the inter-service communications and the request the end user requests authorization using the JSON web tokens. And also we apply some namespace wide authorization policy as well. So this is so far our major considerations of building this uh, machine learning model as a, as a managed service. And uh, what's next? So as we already have this mature work workflow, so our goal is to deploy more and more data science services to our production environment. And also, we, we consider things like um, build a real-time feedback, and that involves working with the front-end team as well. And uh, we also want to improve our extensibility in terms of both the code and the data as well. So for the data part, we are trying to build the things like the feature store to reuse the data, including like different embeddings and features. So yeah, that wraps up my presentation and thank you for your interest. If you have any uh, question or suggestion, feel free to send, the, send it in the chat. Okay, let me see the questions. How do you re, uh, measure the reward for multi unbanded testing? So this is a good question. Let's go back, let me go back to the
this slice. So for each outcome, it will lead to a reward. And we do have the, the we do need to specify the uh, logic to calculate the reward. For example, if the user accepts the, uh, if the user clicks through say, this product, we could consider this as a, we could consider a Bonoli reward. That is, uh, we add, add one to this uh, specific branch, or we could also uh, apply some more sophisticated reward logic. For example, it could be time decay, um, time decay, and also depends on what kind of uh, product or what kind of recommendations we are made. And uh, let me see another question. How is to allow the test to be on real time? So uh, the state, another good question is this, multi embedded strategy is to learn over the request. So the state is being updated in real time. Um, well, this depends. So as I said, as I showed in this diagram, this is actually a search for rank services built from just the deployed from our team. So in this one, we are actually we are not implementing a real time reward because we do not have a, a capacity from the front end. So what we did is we use this uh, web analytics data and put and run a data pipeline and calculate this uh, state and reward and stuff and as and uh, deploy our uh, rotor as a state status service and pull this uh, persistent in the state or reward or or the uh, routing from our backend persistent database but we are trying to build a real-time feedback and reward calculation in the future so what kind of library tools and bootstrapping implement this multi embedded routing so basically we are just using a plain python to to implement this multi embedded road trip, uh, road um, logic. So can you give an example of how recommended model A and B, C, D for in your model testing? So that, for, so I will take this, I will take this Epsilon Grady and Thompson sampling as an example. So for example, we have model A and B and C. So if we are implementing Epsilon Grady, so we first we randomly choose a model, for example, model A from for, the, for this request. And uh, after we get the feedback and calculate the reward, we, we could know what is the payout rate for the, the each variant, like model A and B and C. So after some trials, we found that model A has the highest payout rate. So we, we could select the model A with a, with a probability of one minus epsilon, which is a larger number because epsilon is a very small positive number, much smaller than one. And for Thompson sampling, it is a more sophisticated. So first we assume three different distributions for model A and B and C. So after we select some action, for example, we select model A and uh, it, it is, we sample this model parameter theta from this distribution and assume that model A that's the highest parameter theta. So we will select the model A that associated with this parameter. And after the feedback loop, we'll update the, the parameters of this distribution. For example, if we are using some beta distribution, uh, we could update the two parameters, the alpha and beta of this distribution based on their reward. And so after we, after we uh, carry on this uh, experiment, the, the distributions for different model A and model B and model C, they up, their parameters are updated. So the model parameter that's sampled from this distribution will, different as, will be different as well. And it is a much higher probability that the model that with better performance will be chosen. Yeah, for, the, for this uh, Epsilon grade, this, in this case, the Epsilon is fixed, fixed. So for each, in our current, uh, um, Implement, implement, 
documentation, I think. Okay, here. So as each model in its own container and has its own API endpoint. So actually in our case, because the deployment unit on the Kubernetes cluster is a pod. So in 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 the in this pod, that is in one of our machine learning model deployment, we have several containers. One is a the Envoy cloud, um, proxy from Istio that handles the inbound and outbound traffic. I also have this service orchestrator container that is the web server provided by Selden. And we also have three, or in our case, we have the, these three microservice components that is two models, model A, model B, and the router. So this, this microservice component, they, they interact within the pod. And the pod itself, it has two external end, API endpoints. One is for the feedback, one is for the prediction that we get the model inference. Another endpoint is the feedback that we could send, we could send the model, for example, the, the reward or the branch values to this deployment. And I think, yeah, we have our colleague Anshuman in this uh, in the chat channel as well. So um, this one, the so in this in this diagram, this uh, this re-ranking search re-ranking services. So, Ashman could uh, answer more questions about this one as well because uh, we uh, Ashman Joshua is the person that we work on the uh, search re-ranking service. Yeah, I think that's uh, all the questions. So, if you have further questions, you're welcome to uh, direct message me, or I will I will also show up in our expert. Uh, exhibition uh, expo booth so we could have more discussion there and uh, thank you for your interest.